Tyler for Lover and welcome boys and girls. I know that it has been really hard for you guys, especially with your studies, given the global crisis that we and our country is facing. So uh, we hope that you are all in good shape and ready to learn something new out of this lesson. And um, even a recap or even a recap of uh, some of the topics that you have already been covered that you already covered in the first few weeks of school. Um, our lesson for today is uh, based on our year 12 uh, geography curriculum. And um, so let's have a look at our learning outcomes. One, define the terminologies associated with geographical processes. So this is our, uh, our process that we're gonna look at today, geographical processes, and also to give examples or provide examples of geo of these of this uh, geographical process. Okay, let's look at process on its own. A process is a sequence of related events which result in clearly measurable and identifiable outcomes. Yeah, or the process later will convection currents. Yeah, is it time if I allow to lay now? Lea, lea, va inga. I, or the what my pair, if I'm a fat ta inga. Memo more. Our convection currents is caused by the intense heat from the Earth's core, which heats up the rocks outside it. Okay, on the wing of the core. The inner core and outer core. Of a fornilla, yeah. Or bella sea, ma amata loa on a rise on a lunga. This heating process causes these rocks to rise and move upwards or move up towards the surface. These heated materials or rocks, when reaching the lower part of the surface of the lithosphere crust, yeah, when it cools down, Okay, let us have a look at this video. Um, it's going to uh, talk about uh, about um, the Earth's spheres or the Earth's uh, physical systems. Earth is kind of like a puzzle. And I don't mean a puzzle like, where did my brother put my hairbrush? Or what exactly is in the tacos they serve on Taco Tuesday? I mean that our planet is made up of four very different parts that all work together to make Earth the lovely place that we know it to be. We call these parts spheres, and between them, they contain all the stuff on our planet. Everything from the fish in the ocean to the air we breathe. Earth has four spheres, the geosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. So what exactly are the spheres, and what's in them? Let's take a look at two, the geosphere and the biosphere. Up first is the geosphere. Geo comes from the Greek word for ground. You may have heard this before in words like geology or geography. It basically means having to do with the Earth. And in a way, the geosphere is kind of like the skeleton of our planet. All of the other spheres are built on top of it. It's made up of all the rocks and minerals on Earth, from the biggest boulders to the tiniest grains of sand. And all of the landforms that those rocks and minerals make up are part of the geosphere too. I'm talking volcanoes, canyons, beaches, mountains, you name it. If it's made out of solid Earth, it's part of the geosphere. Now, it's important to remember that the geosphere includes only non-living stuff. Living things do need to eat though, and all living things are part of another one of Earth's spheres, the biosphere. Bio is Greek for life, and like geo, you've probably heard it before in words like biology, the study of life. The biosphere is made up of many different biomes. Biomes are regions that have similar kinds of plants, animals, and other living things that have adapted to live in that particular region's terrain and climate. Deserts and forests are types of biomes. So are rainforests, grasslands, and wetlands. All of these biomes and many more make up the biosphere. Okay, now that we know what's in these two spheres, let's put them together and try to figure out what belongs to which sphere. 
Imagine a lovely forest meadow, a bird perched on a rock chirping away, a deer standing in the tall grass, a mountain standing tall in the background, and a stream flowing through the clearing. Ah, I can almost smell it. Almost everything in this scene is part of either the geosphere or the biosphere. Let's see if we can figure out which parts go into which sphere. Let's start with the geosphere. We know that there's nothing alive in the geosphere, so we can rule out all the plants and animals. Water is also part of a different sphere, but we'll talk about that later. When we take away the living things, we're left with all the solid earth parts of the scene. The rock the bird was standing on, the soil the grass was growing out of, the mountain in the distance, and the bed the stream water flowed through. So what we're left with is the geosphere. Rocks, soils, and landforms. Got it? Now let's think about the biosphere. Unlike the geosphere, Everything in the biosphere is alive. So the rocks, the mountain, and the stream, they don't count. Now we're just left with the living things, the grass, the birds, the deer. Voila! You found the biosphere. That was one but very informing video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that, but watch this other video and see what you can learn from it. I said that because the first sphere we're going to talk about is the hydrosphere. Hydro comes from the Greek word for water, and all of the water on Earth is in the hydrosphere. This means that every single drop of salt water in the oceans, but also all of the fresh water in lakes and rivers, is in this sphere. And it includes all of the water trapped in glaciers as ice, and the water held deep underground. Now, there's also water in the air around us, too, which we can sometimes see in the form of rain and snow. Those things come from clouds, which happen to be way up in the atmosphere. Our last, but certainly not least, sphere. This sphere contains all of the gases on the planet, which is fitting since atmos comes from the Greek word for air. Although we can't really see the atmosphere or grab onto it, it reaches everywhere and covers the entire planet like a giant snuggly blanket. But our atmosphere blanket isn't all the same. It's split up into many different layers. The troposphere is the lowest layer. It contains 80% of the air on the planet. It's also where all of our weather takes place. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere. There's no weather up there and much less air, but there's still important gases in it that help absorb harmful rays from the sun. The mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere and sits on top of the stratosphere. There's almost no breathable air up there and even less in the thermosphere above it, where you might bump into some satellites flying around the planet. The last layer of the atmosphere is the exosphere. That's the highest you can go and still be on Earth. Once you leave the exosphere, you're officially in space, baby. Now, these two spheres can be kind of hard to tell apart. So let's investigate at the beach. The beach is the perfect place to take a closer look at what pieces of our environment make up the hydrosphere and which are parts of the atmosphere. The beach is, of course, right next to the ocean. And since the ocean holds most of the water on our planet, it's the biggest part of the hydrosphere. The rivers that flow into the ocean are also a big part. And so is the rain that's just starting to fall on our beach. Well, that's a bummer, but check this out. While the rain is a part of the hydrosphere, the clouds it came from are actually part of the atmosphere, and the wind that pushes the waves around is part of the atmosphere too. Even though we can't see it, the atmosphere is all around us in the form of the air that we breathe. Okay, having watched that video, we should now have a fair idea of the different spheres of Earth. Ah. And we can say that all these spheres are interrelated and are interdependent of the other. The main concept that we are looking at here is interaction. Interaction is the relationship amongst these spheres. Okay, So um, it's really important to know these interactions. OK, we're going to have an activity. We're not going to do the whole activity, but I'm just going to briefly go on it, and then if you have time, so you do it on your own and see how it goes. Oh, okay, in the activity, as you can see, there is a diagram. On that diagram, it represents one of the four spheres that we already watched that video earlier. Okay, the first one is climate, second one relief, soil, and then vegetation. As you can see, there are 12 arrows. 
Yeah, a key term there, Bill of Tawa, only interaction. Ah, yeah. So it's like uh, a representation of the relationship amongst the different uh, spheres. Okay, we're going to talk about relief and climate, or point A and the environmental system at point B, or physical system at point B, which are one, climate, and then B, A, climate, and then B, relief. Ah. Okay, relief can be defined as the features or the landscape of a certain area. For Linga Lao, the Lao Fanua, or Samoa, yeah, or the relief for now Samoa. Okay, some technical terms, uh, conditions of conditions of a region, which um, one would be the temperature, the air pressure, the humidity, the precipitation, the sunshine, the cloudiness, and winds uh, throughout the year. Yeah, they, they can be averaged over a series of years, which or the climate or not. Uh, so if you have time, please go and find out um, the definitions for the, the the terms temperature, pressure, so forth. They talked about I made on the screen. A relationship between climate and relief. Yeah, the continent. Ah, the continent. So. So at high altitudes in these um, continents, yeah, causes freeze thaw, which results in erosion. Which results in erosion, which modifies relief. Which is the climate. Yeah, on malulu. Ma 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 alu tau sanga fia ah geologic time ia ma ma fuai lo ona ta ta e ia tu langa i ma ma su ia i fori nga vai ya okay so now we're going to talk about the physical processes um taking place in um geology ah wa ia geological processes ia ia engalu lu e fa tasi ina ia mau wai ia ni pa teni ah po patterns. Uh, patterns, yeah, of all in our aya and fine tattoo, fine of fear, no matter winner. Okay, geological comes from the word or the term geology, which means the study of earth, the materials which it is made up of, and the structure of those materials and the processes acting upon them. Let us look at the earth's structure using these steel diagrams. So when you, whenever you come across an image that's that's been cut, uh, and then you have a, a, a horizontal view of it, uh, you view it from the side, just the same as this diagram. That's called a cross section. In the ear term, Okay, so the layers of the earth. You have the. We start. We we are going to start uh, looking at it from the inside out. The core, which is the innermost part of the earth, is very solid and very dense. The outer core is fluid. Lunaluai, or the mesosphere, also known as the lower mantle. It is made up of large amounts of magma. Yeah, this is the result of the intense and uh, immense heat from the core. Estinosphere, lesivaeng aluntolu. Also known as the upper mantle, yeah, is made up of soft and plastic materials. As a result of these uh, immense pressures and immense temperatures, very high temperatures. Ah, yeah, on my foot angan na, yeah, yeah, lai on the pie, if I ngai na, if I am chala, the material le mau ay to tonu ba ngan le lalang as being soft and plastic. Okay. And then we have the lithosphere. The lithosphere is the outermost part of the Earth's surface. 
ya na e pi ma ni fi ni fi ya na na fa i ngo mai lu ngo le ata o le crust that is a lithosphere ah e lu alai tu ai nga lithosphere o le continental male oceanic but we'll get uh we'll come back to that ah as if a wow belt at to le song okay after the lithosphere we have the biosphere this is where all life is located ah Olo no wing, or lung or funga ele ele, in male or tattoo, feola man no foy. Ya on wang aleo, eta or tattoo, the biosphere. Ah. Okay, so our lung atu la tattoo, we have the atmosphere. Ah. Yale nata mit, our leo le amata matal tattoo water, or tattoo water, ye fat tattoo la vel male or tattoo, ya. We are going, we are talking about the earth's uh, structure. The face of Earth is continually shifting, influenced by a process called plate tectonics. Earth's surface, the lithosphere, is a mosaic of many plates girdling the planet like seams on a baseball. These plates drift on top of Earth's hot and slowly churning mantle. Over time, colliding, breaking apart, and grinding against each other. To understand tectonics, scientists look back only 200 million years. Two hundred and twenty-five million years ago, our planet looked very different. All the continents were joined together in a single supercontinent called Pangaea. As the plates moved, this supercontinent broke up. New oceans formed as continents drifted around the globe. It's this that has created the shape of the world we know today. But the plates never stop moving. In the distant future, our continents will once again be reunited in a new giant supercontinent. It happens because hot rock rises heated by the Earth's core. Near the surface, the rock spreads in two directions and goes sideways. It begins to lose heat. Eventually, the much cooler rock sinks back down. Through this spreading process, the Earth's crust is very slowly dragged apart. And it's this that ultimately causes the continents to move. Yeah, well, so now we're going to look at an image um, that further you know takes us into this um, to, to our to our journey here on um, geological processes yeah so ba ba ai tu yai fu ding on la lang u yai ah ya leta wa alfred vagina ah on tectonic plates wa wa drift apart ah ya le la wa yai le current state le wa yai le lang okay so convection currents are playing their part here ah ya wa lu ama tanta to wa ti to no geological um geological processes ah it's a cross section of earth and the image illustrates geological processes uh, which is or convection current there are two kinds of uh, lithospheric crusts or tectonic plates uh, the one, the other one is oceanic, and the other one is continental. That's on uh, black and white. Yeah, on my continent, continental plate that represents that. On your right, and then you would have the the oceanic plate on your left. Na pi kau valiuli, na i au na yeah okay. Oh, that's on oceanic plates. Okay, the differences. Yeah, elo na isesenga. 
ole or continental e faisi ma ma ole oceanic e ma mafa ha ole mafu anga ya e ya folingo ole tulanga ile rock pole material na na to tonu papa ma ane lo pole fausi ai papa ni lo ha ole oceanic it's made up of very dense rocks uh, composition is very th- um it's combined uh it's made up of basaltic compositions uh um it's made up of new material generated from you know underwater volcanoes at the uh, mid oceanic ridge uh all of city la lo tula mai ola la le me tula mai po ame tupu ile va o papa ma ane ah ola la me tula mai pe afa pe e ole float ma move ah Okay, let us have a look at the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire is a region that surrounds the Earth's Pacific Ocean, and it is known for its volcanoes and earthquake activity. Ring of Fire, po ole Rim of Fire, olo o taamilo milo anga ile Pacifica, ole taula inga la ole papa ma ole Pacific Plate, ya wata uwalea. Ole ring of fire. O i, olo oyai, olo o tutupuai, le tele o maunga mu, mama fuye. Okay? Okay? So one of the processes that occurs in this uh, region, ah, uh, po ole taula inga o papa maa, ia lela atato u o atu yai. Ole atamua mua le atamuiti. Also, I take the inga or the plate boundary there. It's a wall diverging plate boundary. Ah, but the sea floor spreading. Let's tell them that to found in the curriculum. What happens here is two plates moving away from each other, and when these two plates are moving away from each other, um, it causes it allows magma to rise from deep within the earth. And erupts to form new crust or lithosphere. Ah, yeah. Or say, fate ta inga o o o features o o le neva inga lalang. Yeah, emo ama yai me ta o mid oceanic ridges. Okay, mid oceanic ridges. An example would be the mid Atlantic. Yeah, and the East Pacific rise. Okay, they are located. The, the East Pacific Rise is located uh, in between the, the the Pacific Plate and the South American Plate, or the and the Nazca Plate. Ah, leto te wa ai toi. Ia alu ia le Nazca na ile tu tam tau, alu Pacific na ile tu ang vali. Ia ole tu pu ile process le e ka ole divergent process. Another feature of this. Uh, of this uh, uh of this process is submarine mountain ranges ah form up by me ka o o submarine mountain ranges we up be say at mongwa in la lo ile ile to ele po la lo ile 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 pito la lo sami ah okay so we have um we also have volcanoes and earthquakes occurring at this uh boundary um volcanoes are mostly effusive uh the other process that we're going to talk about is subduction. Ah, subduction zones, or the thing where have a destructive margins. This is when two plates with different masses come together, drifting towards the same direction. This usually happens when a continental and an oceanic plate collide with each other. Ah, the more dense. Oceanic plate, yeah, yeah, lui lalo, and the less dense continental plate, yeah, eu peu peu longo al papa ma ale on oceanic plate. Some of the features that uh, result from this process would be oceanic trenches. Ma va ita tu la tala ta miti, yeah, na ile tonga trench, yeah, ona fo iya iya le Peru Chile trench ile ile si tu, the Middle America trench. Trenches. They are the result of subduction process. Okay? Olesi feature to puma il vayangalea. Ometa o island arcs. Island arcs are a chain of islands caused and formed by volcanoes. Like a perfect example 
is Japanese, the Japanese islands. Okay. Volcanoes and earthquakes that occur on this side, on this area, are mostly explosive. Uh, explosive eruptions and violent earthquakes. Vulnerable to natural processes. Okay. The other one that we uh, need to talk about is the transform plate boundaries. When two plates move past one another. Uh, okay. So when two plates move past one another. The other one going a different direction, but they um, move side by side. Uh, okay. Example of features in Momai'i, we have faults. Like an example, St. Andreas Fault. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, most of the some of the the, the, the common uh, uh, features here, yeah, more process here, earthquakes, uh, which are mostly violent earthquakes. Okay, and then we have the collision zone. Ah, what is it to a in a process to puma ilvangala? When two plates with the same mass, ah, uh, they come together. Ah, lo no wina ufe to ait ole olme to pu. But they both intend to rise and elevate or move upwards. An example of a feature that results from this process, we have fold mountains. An example of that, we have the Himalayans. They have the, they mostly have the, the highest points on earth. Uh, an example would be the tallest uh, mountain, Mount Everest, which is a result of that collision, the Himalayas, which is or Mount Everest. Uh. Okay, and last but not least, hot spots. Hotspots is a stationary hotspot underneath the Earth's lithosphere with immense heat and pressure that enables um, the, the magma inside the Earth to pass through uh, the surface, forming volcanic chains of islands. Uh, uh, a perfect example would be the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, the, oldest, um, the oldest island is the furthest away from the hotspot. The well, hotspot is yeah, the youngest island. The location is the hotspot. Hotspots don't usually occur along these plate boundaries. They say that the hotspot is the most important part of the island. The hotspot is the most important part of the island. So it doesn't need two plates interacting or moving. Uh, it just happens hotspot okay but to wrap up our lesson uh, I know that uh, we have already looked at um, defining some terms uh, like physical process looked at processes we looked at physical so forth uh, at we also looked at identifying the spheres buying or spheres or spheres if and that in between these spheres there's interaction going on uh, okay we also looked at the earth's layers uh, right from the core to the lithosphere and biosphere we're going to get there in our second lesson okay but let's focus here and then we also looked at um, some of the processes behind this, uh, all these happenings. Huh? Uh, the geological process like continental drift, we talked about uh, subduction zone, we talked about the, uh, the stuff involved there, the terms involved there, we talked about uh, 
divergent uh, boundaries with seafloor or seafloor spreading as, as it's uh, commonly uh, named in our curriculum. Uh, we have riches there and so forth and so forth. Uh, and then also the col collision points um, where, you know, fold mountains form. Yeah, and hotspot. Uh, by now, you should have an answer right in, right in your heart that, um, you know, we are and you are the student. Uh, you are part of this. Uh, you are sitting right in the middle of all of this happening. So, uh, uh, Samoa is on the Pacific Plate and the Pacific Plate, guys, is surrounded by the Ring of Fire. Uh. In our website, uh, you know, we have fact sheets, we, we have some links, some links containing some of the content uh, pertaining to our topic for today. And we also, you know, have some activities. If you enjoyed, then I hope that you guys are going to be back uh, to, uh, with our, our second lesson. I hope we're going to cover the other two uh, physical processes yeah, all in good time and, you know, time limitation that uh, that's an issue. But, okay, stay safe. Remember to always wash your hands now and then and stay safe. So far, safe.